ADHD Rewired episode 114. This is the show designed to help those of us who have really good intentions and a slightly wandering attention. My name is Eric Tivers. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, coach, and consultant. We know that starting can be the hardest part, so let's get started. But first, let me thank our sponsors. Hello, everybody. Today's date is May 2nd, 2016. I have some really big news for you guys. I'm, I'm not even sure how to tell you this because I've never had to, to do something like this before. Nothing like this has ever happened. So and I don't even have all the details worked out, but I need to tell you about this so you can start thinking about it. Now you're probably wondering, what the hell am I talking about? I mean, it's, it's just unbelievable. All right. I received $1,400 from a recent graduate of the ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Group as a donation to provide a scholarship, provide financial aid for one, two, or maybe three people who would love to have the opportunity to join the ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Group, but are unable to afford it. Now, I'm still trying to figure out the details of how this is all going to work, but if this sparked your interest, watch your email inbox, Facebook, my website, and I'm going to actually try to get together a midweek episode to really share all the details with you because I know that time is running out, but we are going to do this as a contest. So watch all the places where information comes from me, and uh, and this is officially called the ADHD Rewired Super Amazing Awesome Pants Scholarship Fund. When you donate something like this for something like this, you get to pick the name of the fund. So more information is coming. Stay tuned. I am really grateful. I'm grateful for, I'm really grateful for this group. Every Friday in the ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Group, we begin with sharing gratitudes. And at the very end, I asked members of the group to talk to you, the listener, who might have only recently discovered this podcast or only recently discovered you have ADHD. I asked them to imagine that they were getting an opportunity to talk directly to you. I asked them to imagine how they were feeling before they joined this group and talk to that listener. The one who has been feeling overwhelmed, underproductive, and stuck. The one who has really big ideas but doesn't know what to do first. This is what they think you should know. If you want the structure and accountability that will help you get done what's important to you. If you want to feel at home. If you want to put into place all those things that you heard about on the podcast but you can't seem to do it on your own if you have a, a gazillion and one ideas but you can't seem to execute on any one if you want to stop isolating yourself because you feel like a weirdo in a world that you're surrounded by normal people if you want help with some of your trickier ADD tendencies from really bright, cool people with ADD tendencies who get it, this is your group. This group is for you. This is a group for you. This is your group. This is the group for you. This group is for you. This is the group for you. But now it's up to you to take the next step. Go to ADHDrewired.com. Click on that group coaching logo. Schedule your call with me. Let's get you signed up today. I have sessions available same day where you and I can talk to see if this group is right for you. Go to ADHDrewired.com and prepare to get your ADHD rewired. Okay, some other things. Webinar news. So the, the webinar, High Tech and Low Tech Solutions to Supercharge Your Productivity, is now available on demand for free and include a free PDF of all the tools, apps, and other websites I talk about during the webinar. You will be able to access this webinar until registration closes 
for the ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Group. And I'm going to be changing the format of the previously scheduled webinars to include a one-hour Q&A instead of the originally uh, uh, scheduled webinar that I am now making available on demand. Check the website, ADHDrewired.com, for details. Okay, a couple more things. You guys remember Blab? I did a bunch of Blabs on Blab.im a couple months ago. Well, Wednesday, May 11th at 10.30 a.m., Shelly Collins is going to be joining us on Blab to help us organize our desks and offices. Shelly Collins, if you remember, is a professional organizer. She was on episode 108. She's going to help the ADHD Rewired community get their desks and offices organized. I'll get the links posted up at ADHDrewired.com and on Facebook. All you have to do is log in with your Facebook account or Twitter to participate in this live chat, which includes a video. And if uh, and she's going to help you right there in your office organizing your stuff. And I know I have some questions for her as well. If you don't have Facebook or Twitter, don't worry. You can still watch this, uh, this chat live. Um, but you won't be able to participate in it. You have to have Facebook or Twitter, and I'm sure there's still one or two of you out there, uh, like my wife, who is not on Facebook or Twitter. Uh, other things regarding Blab, I'm going to be bringing back Dr. Roberto Olivardia, who's been on the show a couple times, and he's going to be talking with us about ADHD and bipolar disorder. Now, if you're listening to this before Wednesday, May 4th, check Facebook or my website or blab.im but because we are going to try to do this on Blab, there's a lot of last minute things going on right now. So just check all the places where you get information about ADHD Rewired. And don't wait to check out the webinar replay that is on demand at my website. Just go to ADHDrewired.com. You will see where to click when you are there. Welcome back to another episode of ADHD Rewired. I am really happy to have back in the virtual ADHD studios, meeting me in the C in ADHD studios, Jenny Friedman. She's an ADHD coach, fellow podcaster, and previous guest on the show. Uh, last year, we spoke about her writing her book, C in ADHD, and get clear on what's going on. Listen in as she updates us on her status of that project as well as her newest endeavor, the relaunch of her podcast, Seeing ADHD Talk Radio. Jenny, welcome back to ADHD Rewired. Thank you. Good to be here. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. So one of the uh, the reasons I wanted to have you back as a uh, you know fellow kind of podcasting, uh, just I'm I'm a podcasting nerd. I think that you may also be a podcasting nerd and. We are both in a, uh, a membership community for podcasters, and I saw that you were talking about like doing something where you're updating your, your feed, and as a podcast, if you start new, you can potentially lose a bunch of listeners, and so this is one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the show, because, you know, Jenny, one of the things that you and I both do is, is we help people with ADHD tell their stories. And I think you do such a nice job on your podcast that I want to make sure that people are one aware of your podcast. And if they are aware of your podcast and they notice that they're that your feed hasn't updated in a while, that they need to go back to iTunes and and subscribe to the new version of C and ADHD. Um, and so I just want to talk with you about how that is going. Um, to kind of is as part of the kind of the campaign to spread awareness. Well, I really appreciate it. And yeah, it's um it's been quite a learning experience for me because I am not very technically inclined. And so I wanted to make sure that I knew what I was doing as best I could before I made the decision because what you can do is you can redirect an old feed, take on a new host and keep your, you know, keep your listenership and all that uninterrupted. And so that was an option because I was using a host that was way too expensive. And just why I was doing that was because I didn't know any better when I started. So now I think CNA ADHD, the podcast had been going about 10 months. And I was, 
I was in one of those support kind of meetings in our membership group. Can we can we talk about that? I mean, are we not yes. talking about that intentionally? No, you know, Jenna, here we are. Are we not talking about about what? About Podcasters Paradise. No, we could talk about Podcasters Paradise. Okay, that's fine. Right, because I'm like, okay, so I was on one of those support, like not support, but like um, John Lee Dumas from Podcasters Paradise. He is the group that we belong to and he has sometimes an open like you can just meet him on mm-hmm. lab or you meet him on wherever his form so i asked him straight up what would be his advice to me as far as should i just start over or should i um you know redirect the feed so he said well how many you know, downloads do you have? And I said, well, I know it can't be near enough because <laughs> my friend Eric Divers has an amazing big wide audience and I'm nowhere near that. And so I said, I, I've got, after 10 months, I've got 12,000 downloads that I think of. I don't even know because I'm looking at stats. I didn't even know how to look at stats in WordPress. So I don't know. I'm just going by my old host who I don't want to name them because they're so bad. I don't even want anybody to accidentally check them out. I've done that before. I've told my friends, I'm like, don't do, you know, X, Y, Z. And they're just dying to know why. So they go and they do X, Y, Z. Well, you know, and me and every other listener right now is dying to know why. I can't say it. I'm sparing you. It's in your best interest not to know. Oh, man. So at any rate, he said, Oh my gosh. He started laughing. He said, you have nothing to lose. (laughs) That's like really bad. So I was like, Oh wow. Cause you know, I, I mean, the one thing I will say is that I have loyal listeners who respond to. So I was like, even if I'm talking to one person, wow, what an honor. One person has me in their podcast feed and they're listening and find it valuable. So that was really, I said, okay, if, if he's actually saying that it's ridiculously low, then then I have nothing to save. And so I didn't redirect. And that what that does is give you an opportunity to go into iTunes, the new and noteworthy, which I had mm-hmm. never done in the beginning right. because I actually joined the support group after I had started my podcast. So it's, it's one and and whether or not you have any interest in podcasting at, you know, as as Jenny and I are, I think what we can extract from this so much is, you know, we could you, you go after something that you want to do. Right. And you, you dive in and then you look around and, and you realize, you know, I made some mistakes here. And I think it, it's an, an awesome message to look at and say, you, know, you can redo, you can relaunch, you can, you know, take a look at what you did and say, you know what, if I would have known this, then I would have done this differently. And you could change course, which that's, you did. That's exactly what I was saying to myself too many times like I kept hearing myself say if only I had known if Mm -hmm. only I'd known and then I went what am I whose rules am I listening (laughs) to you know there's no rules that say I can't now that I know better I can do better Mm -hmm. right so I also at the same time this all ties in together so bear with me for a minute but Mm -hmm. simultaneously to this like thoughts of relaunching the podcast or just redirecting the feed. I also was having sort of a minor, I don't want to say a breakdown, but sort of a freak out of stress that I could not really handle anymore. And that was trying to put out an article every week on my website, which I do. I'm trying to write this book, which a year over a year ago, I was writing this book. Now, okay. which, which one? Well, I did I did pull out a little bit from the original writings to create an ebook. Mm-hmm. But the original book that you just mentioned, I am still not published there. So and I was writing every week. And I now, think it's important just to remind listeners that Jenny doesn't have ADHD. <laughs> so it's not just, you know, it's not just oh, those of us with ADHD, we don't finish things. It's, you know, projects can be hard. So so talk to us a little bit more about kind of where you're at with this. Right. So, well, what was happening was I would write my article for my website and put that out every Monday. Mm -hmm. And then every Tuesday, there would be a compliment, complimentary, but like sort of the same subject, but 
more specific to ADHD, even more specific mm-hmm. for my email list. And so that's another writing thing. And then doing the podcast and putting that out on Wednesday and then spending Thursday and Friday co- and, and coaching clients in, intermittently and doing, you know, thinking of articles for the following week. So it got to be where I was freaking out because I'm not a writer. I'm actually not a writer. Mm-hmm. When I went to school, you know, in psychology, they have you write a lot of papers. And I got really excited to find or to discover that I can write. But because you can do something <laughs> doesn't mean you should. Um, and and so while I was doing my 10 months of the podcast and then starting to think about, wow, if only I would known, if only I would known, I would have done a few things differently. I also was sort of freaking out about what I was doing was something I wasn't enjoying even though I'm good at it, Mm -hmm. which I mean, sounds very arrogant. I was just getting lots of positive feedback in an area that I I don't enjoy. I think it's important. I just want to kind of call you on that for just a sec. I think there's, there's this like dirty idea of we can't tell ourselves and share with others that we acknowledge that we're good at something. Why not? Mm. Why not? Well, okay. I mean, it feels, it feels, better to be good at something you enjoy. Absolutely. So I, I really, I sort of take no joy. I mean, I'm proud that I can write. It's a skill. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. You don't like it. I don't want to sit and do it every day. I just don't. So, what do you, so what's been your pivot? <laughs> so, okay. So then I had this genius idea to practice what I preach to my clients. And that is, do what you're, you know, what you have a passion for, do what you're interested in. And while I was very interested in doing the podcast, it was like secondary to this thing that I thought I had to do for, I don't even know where, I don't even really know how it all started (laughs) that I went into this writing well (laughs) that I wanted to dig myself out of. But I was like, how about we just change and we stop the writing. If you're going to write, finish the book and stop worrying about writing out articles and, and they're getting shared and nah, you know, <laughs> don't worry about that. Worry about your voice and what you want to contribute to the world, which is what I do with my podcast. And so I said, now, if I do that, I ramp that up. I'm doing it five days a week. I love it. It is, I'm not going to say it's effortless, but compared to writing, it certainly is. And I mean, I'm really having a ball. Whereas I was about to commit myself last fall. I do have to ask now. Okay. So let me, I was going to ask you something else, but then with that last (laughs) statement, like, so how, you know, how close were you to getting ready to commit yourself? it, it, It was just really, really bad. Like it was really bad. Like I really was not in a good place emotionally, even to be around my family. Like I just was very sort of down and, and sitting in front of a desk doing the thing I hate. Oh, that's... And I was, and, and beginning to hate it even more and resenting it, which what, sounds what overdramatic, shifted? but, sh- but at I, the time, I don't think it is though. Cause I think that a lot of us um, experience and people that. would say, how are you doing? And I'd be like, Oh, I'm great. And on the inside, I'm like, I am not great. I'm miserable. The only I am, time I was I am having barely, fun. you know, I'm, I'm barely good for human consumption at this moment. <laughs> exactly. And yet here I am having to coach people mm-hmm. and feeling like I'm not even taking what I say to, to, to action. I mean, this is like, you feel like such a fraud yeah. without meaning to, I was believing what I was saying. And then that's when I was like, Jenny, listen to yourself. Mm-hmm. Why don't you do the thing that you're telling everyone else? And so I just like that did and like that got really happy again. Awesome. Was, yeah. it, a, was it a scary decision to let it go? Or did it, just um, it feel was like a, until, a decision out of necessity? No, it was, it, it was, it was, it was, it was a decision that I thought of more than I normally think of things. Normally I'm more of a risk taker mm-hmm. and think, 
I trust my intuition and I normally go, oh, if I feel this strongly, then that's what you do. Mm -hmm. But I had worked so hard at developing a body of work I was so proud of that I couldn't even begin to think of how it could be better, like a faith thing. It was like, really? Because I really put my all into that. And even though no one's stats, like by no one else's um, you know, measurement, it's good. To me, it was really good. So that's what made it so hard to let go of it. But I knew one way or another, I was going to change it. I was going to change to five days. Even if I hadn't relaunched the way I did, I was going to change it to five days a week. And I was going to go all out doing that. And I was going to abandon the writing machine that I had become. Yeah. That so I was, when that I was like a one day decision. When I saw that you were doing five days a week, my first thought was, oh, that's, um, that's crazy. Um, that was also my second thought. Uh, <laughs> and, but then I was wondering, okay, so Jenny Friedman is probably getting ready to like launch something really big. Maybe she finished her book. And so she's doing this as a way <laughs> to, uh, you know, get the word out and, and really kind of do the hustle. So is this five day a week, is this a long-term plan or is this sort of a launch plan? kind of strategy for to get to get uh um traction on the podcast you know that is like i i should be that smart no this is just what i'm doing now this is I, just it i love how honestly you answered that because <laughs> when, when i think about you know where i am and now uh with the podcast and my coaching groups i when i first started the podcast i had no idea what what it was going to be Right. It, I mean, it's funny because when I listen, if you go back and listen to the very first episode, you know, this is what podcasters are quote unquote supposed to do is where they tell you what the podcast is going to be about, what you can expect from this podcast. If, you, if you've been listening for a while and you've never listened to episode one, go back and listen to it. And you're going to have this thought of that's not at all what this podcast is. And I have these thoughts of, oh, I should probably update that. And, I don't know. It's just not that important to me, I guess, to, to update it. Um, even though they say it's like your most listened to, you know, your, uh, um, podcast. There's also something sort of nostalgic and very ADHD like of having this thought of I should update that, but never actually doing it. <laughs> I, you know what you could do? You could do a zero 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 point two. That's an idea. And I've even, I've even like had someone interview me a while back for. The, the kind of zero 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 episode which is like the the pre episode this is like the, this is about the podcast episode um but i've never i never used that at all i well you know i never had a zero 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 because i didn't know you were supposed to have one um until now i have one is it the most listened to yes um it's also the shortest mm -hmm. so that makes sense if people just want to you know do you a favor and listen to a little something and give you an idea of if they like it or not. Um, but I don't think in the long run, it will be the most listened to. Right. I, I just don't, you know, and again, I'm having really good feedback, but I didn't really change up the show. I'm just mm -hmm. doing more of what I love. And now what's this other, I saw this other show that you're doing with, um, uh, Brett, Brett. Yes. Who was Brett that? Thornhill. Who, yeah. Who was also on the show. I was like, and that that was a time I'm like, all right, like Jenny's getting ready to take over the world. Like she's on this, <laughs> this, another podcast. Like, <laughs> that was, was that just like a little mini side project or are you guys doing that on a regular basis? We're doing this on a regular basis for as long as we enjoy it. And you know, what was happening was we were talking every day with each other about ADHD, just mm -hmm. like big nerds getting yeah. off on talking about, you know, science and people and like, you know, so it had been an idea of my, I had already, I already owned the domain to ADD couple and had tried with someone else to do like a, a project and it never came to fruition. So when I said, Hey, do you want to use it and do a show? Um, he was like, yeah, let's do it. So it's a fun thing that we're doing it. They were very short little episodes that they talk about basically one topic, but it's basically taking what we were doing, how I imagine you and Tom probably are. Like if you t took you and Tom and just made another podcast out of that, that's sort of what I imagine. That's how I think you can look at it. 
I think if we, if Tom and I, uh, and we keep talking about, and we have on occasion hit record, it's like, let's just get a general rule. We're just going to hit record, even with no plans to doing anything with it. I don't know, though. I think that it would, um, I, I would be putting my reputation at risk if we release <laughs> the, <laughs> the things that Tom and Tom and I talk about. Because it's, uh, you know, it's, it, it, it's a, it's an awesome relationship Tom and I have. You know, it's, mm-hmm. um, he's, it's like, not to sound kind of, cheesy but he's like the yin to my yang you know he's like i'm like personal growth system strategies and he's like i don't really give a crap you know <laughs> <laughs> yes i can see how that yeah that is how that is for you guys um brett and i are more like um on the same page but just sort of i think come from two different vantage points right but are on the same page about things. So it's not quite the yin and yang thing. Yeah. <laughs> but it could be fun. You could call it that. We, we have lots of ideas. I mean, so last week, I think we should like record like a, a maybe have a, a inside ADHD rewired and just record the conversations that we have. Like two weeks ago, it was, I forget which episode it was, where it took us an hour and a half just to decide on the title of an episode. It was so painful. And it... <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's, it's sort of, the, it's the process and it's, it's. Um... But the, see, I think that some people would be very interested in that. Maybe. You know, you'd be surprised Maybe, what people yeah. are interested in. That's and true. if it's a way that you're spending your time anyway, then the people that really like dig you are going to dig that too. That's true. You know, I think. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Mm-hmm. Wait, are you saying there's too much of a, like too much Eric? There's... You know, there, there are certain things that maybe, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm incredibly open on the show. You know, it's like, I'm, you are, I am pretty much of an open book. There's some things that maybe I don't share in my, you know, it's, my candor or off the cuff uh you know it's like when i know that nobody else is listening i may say things that i wouldn't say in polite company right 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 so that's more of the the things that i'm not sure i would want other people to hear i mean we all have that part of ourselves, right yeah well yeah i think when i was losing my right (laughs) (laughs) when i was losing my mind (laughs) writing i don't think i really shared that with anybody and I kept waiting for it to show up in my writing. And I don't think it really did. Hmm. It's really weird. In fact, I kept getting more opportunities for writing. And it was really <laughs> making me mad. It's, it's so funny. So like a year ago when I wrote the, um, the um, title, uh, the cover article for um, Attitude Magazine. Um, and it, it was, it's been, I think it's been viewed like 20,000 times. Which is amazing, right? And you know, and they keep asking me to write something. I'm like, okay, and then like I don't, <laughs> but I don't follow up on it. It's just like, you know, I, I guess for me, it's like if they if they want me to write the headline, like that to me is worth the time and pain, you know. But to just write like a just an article, it's like eh, it's, I don't know if that's worth my pain, you know. It's like, yeah, right. you know. Part of it is I think it will take me like 40 hours to write, even though it will probably will take me like three, right? Um, because that's just, that's writing is so often in my red zone. And I can't like bottle up the, the you know, occasional time where it just flows out of me. Man, I wish I could bottle that up and, and replicate it. It's because it, it does happen occasionally. And I've always wondered like, what is it about that, those moments that it just happens well, yeah. So with my book, you know, what happens with me is if I start working on it, well, I can't say recently, but but what was happening originally was it had a lot of pain in it. So then I would start having a big emotional reaction to what I was actually remembering and sort of reliving. And it was, it's hard to want to pick that back up and take, you know, it's hard to go, oh, let sure. me do that more of that. Um, so that but I've really gotten past all that part. So now I feel like um, maybe I have unrealistic expectations on what it is supposed to be. Mm. So I forget the conversation the other day, but it was someone else who does some coaching 
because I remember thinking, oh no, it was someone who doesn't coach. And I said, oh, I know. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm just like, oh, right. Now she so, says she doesn't have ADHD, but. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so someone says to me, uh, talking about things being good enough, but mm. whatever, however the connection was made, I went, you know, I think you just coached the coach. I think maybe my book might be just fine the way it is. Mm. Maybe I am done. That's awesome. Maybe I'm actually done and just didn't realize it. Do you remember what it was this person said? No, I it don't. But great. I do remember who great. it is. It'll make, it'll make for great audio. if you. Now play. I remember who it is, but I don't remember <laughs> what they said. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I was listening to, um, I've been listening to your podcast quite a bit uh, recently. Um, and of course, I just want to tell you that as far as where you were when you first launched the original one to how you're doing things now, you've grown so much and and your audio quality has gotten so much better. Um, and it's funny because I, it's, Tom knows that I'm an audio snob and like it's like blog talk radio, which I know you used to be on um, and you're not on anymore, right? Like no. You're completely, right. Well done, right? Because it's like, oh, really? Because a good podcast that's on Blog Talk Radio isn't a good podcast. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry, the audio, the audio, the audio is so bad. Yeah, you know, the audio and, quality isn't good, right? And so, anyways, um, I was so the, the growth and the the production that you've been doing is great. I just want to say congratulations on that. But Thank I you. was listening to uh, there was a two part episode that you put out recently, and it kind of gave me a aha moment it gave me a is that what what's going on with me it was the um uh vertical heterophoria did i say it right uh-huh yeah it's binocular vision um disorder and one of the one of the conditions is called vertical heterophoria can you talk a little bit about it it has been the most amazing thing to discover because back in one of my uh, i used to own a store and I used to go to a lot of charity events and I used to host a lot of charity events. And one in particular, um, I gave away every month a free pair of shoes. And the winner of that contest is an ophthalmologist who was who beat cancer. She had cancer. So it was like this cancer event and she won the prize and she started coming to my store every month to get a free pair of shoes. And she also would buy like tons of shoes because she loves shoes. And so we had that in common. But we've kept in touch even when I closed the store. And she went on to build her business. Um, and she tells the story in one of my podcasts, but uh, of how she just by chance was flipping through a magazine and saw this woman who has devised a way of measuring for this, um, I'll say discrepancy, but it is considered a disorder. But it's, you're, you're vertically, your eyes are not aligned. Even the slightest misalignment can create a lifetime of learning disabilities, headaches, nausea, dizziness, and even at such a slight rate that you just feel chronically fatigued and it doesn't even have to do with your vision. So she's telling me she saw on LinkedIn, I'm a coach, ADHD coach, and I coach you with or without medication. And she was like, we had already connected on LinkedIn because we already knew each other. But she said, when I saw that, Jenny, I really wanted you to be the one to tell people about this because we have the same idea. She's very much like the medicine is the glasses. And she loves natural approach and coaching, as you know, is a natural approach to management. And so, you I know. I think you know that I don't like the whole phrase, the natural approach. But as, a, I, it, as Rick Green says, well, dirt is natural. I can give you a handful of that. I know, I know, and I'm with you, but I'm just explaining why she, her, her, her point of view is there's medicine and then there's a natural approach, but for the sake of what, how she's feeling about the glasses is here, it's because some of her clients have actually been treating their symptoms for binocular vision disorder, including vertical heterophoria. They've been treating it with drugs and drugs will not change that. So that's where she comes like from here's someone who's been taking tons of medication to help a problem that they're just helping the symptoms that mask the real problem. They're not getting what they really need. And so at any rate, I had her on the show. 
she was the one person I've had on my show who I didn't have to edit a beat. And it turns out because when she was younger, she was in acting. So she, I guess, speaks from the diaphragm or something. And it blew me away. And she, and when she talks, she's very like, I would say something and she would go, correct, blah, 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 and say exactly. <laughs> and I was like, she's on it. You know, yeah. she knows her stuff. Her name, by the way, is Cheryl Berger Israeloff. It's hyphenated. Anyway, she's fabulous. And she went to Michigan, I think. I, if I get that wrong, it's up there, I think around Michigan somewhere, near you mm -hmm. with uh, this ophthalmologist woman who developed this system. So so what, she talked what, about what it on it, the so show. Describe, describe really what it is um, because, I mean, I think the impact, and that's part of why you had it on the show, how life-changing it can be. Um, and your, your follow-up interview that you had with um, uh, – now I'm, now I'm having a moment. Um, <laughs> Renee with, Brooks. With Renee Brooks. Um, my brain was saying it's Renee Brooks, but then this part of me, no, it's not Brooks. It is Brooks. So I should, I, you know, I, it would be good if I listened to my brain sometimes. Um, with Renee Brooks, what a powerful, I, one, I think one of your most powerful interviews. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it, and she both was, of she those. Was in tears as she recorded going to this doctor and after hearing about this on your show. I mean, amazing, amazing. Um, so go ahead and talk a little bit about what, um, what this, this thing is and how it right. affects so, so vertical heterophoria is, is misalignment of the eyes, even if it's slight, it doesn't have to be, sometimes it's very, it's even physically normal. Like you can see someone's one eyeball is sort of like an inch higher than the other eyeball, but usually it's not that noticeable. Mm -hmm. And what the brain does is it, it realigns for you subconsciously and puts it so that you actually see a singular vision. I mean, a singular like yeah. object, yeah. but, but what happens for some people, and this blew me away is that some people have such a severe case. They don't actually ever get to a singular image and they actually see ghost image, shadow image, sometimes even double vision their whole life. They're born thinking all humans have four arms. They don't they know. Don't? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> they, do, they don't know any different than how you've always seen. Mm -hmm. So those are the extreme cases, but even the non-extreme cases, I was like, this is, she said um, that she really wanted the ADHD community to really hear about this because they're finding it is disproportionately found in people with ADHD. Now, when she was giving the numbers, I said, well, that sort of just aligns with how many people we see in, you know, with ADHD, but, but I can see of the cases that they have, they're seeing, and I thought maybe that has to do with this whole deregulation. You know, if you're talking about deregulation of executive function, mm -hmm. you also see it with like, um, type one diabetes, you know, deregulation of just systems. Well, mm -hmm. this is another, your vision is another system. And there's a deregulation. So you're not seeing um, completely vertical, equal level. And if you go get your eyes checked, they don't look for this. They can say, no, you have 20-20 vision. You're good. Well, Jenny, one of the things that really struck me. So uh, last year, I went to a new, a new eye doctor. And they did this test that I had never had done before. And one of the things they asked me to, um, to describe the image on top and the image on bottom. And I looked at them and said, what are you talking about? What image on top? I see one image. And then I tilted my head and all of a sudden I see there's this other image. And I was like, well, what does that mean? The response, oh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. So I think that may have, like, that's what they were catching. And I didn't even mm. know what they were catching. And, and I had talked to both my, my doctor and uh, the eye doctor about how when I am driving um, and sometimes when I'm at stores, I get almost this, like pressure around my eyes um, and it like gives me anxiety. Mm -hmm. And when she was describing, like, I was, was going to say, that's, <laughs> that's one of the symptoms. She's like, and then you get pressure and then there's anxiety. Yeah, I, I was, I was exercise. I was out, out in my elliptigo. Um, my, my bike that looks like an elliptical machine. Um, and I'm listening to this and I was just, uh, said, holy shit. 
<laughs> like, I think that might, and, and to me, that's, I love those, those things where you, you know, you think you're fully self-aware and all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, is that part of what's going on? And, and that, you know, so I, I now, Jenny, I haven't done anything with this information yet other than let it like simmer in my mind. Well, there's, okay. So there's, so everyone listening can know there's a couple things you can do. One is you can do a self-test, which is to cover one eye, literally just like put your hand over your eye oh, so, for so five I, so, so I did this, but I couldn't keep it going for five minutes. I was, oh. Like, oh, this is a... <laughs> I was like, I need to find an eye patch or something because it was just. <laughs> it was too annoying to hold up for. Yeah, exactly. Well, you can cover your eye with an eye patch then for five minutes. And if you instantly see that you there's no anxiety, there's less pressure, there's um you know relief of symptoms you know you calmed it it's in renee's case it was like muscle in the neck mm -hmm. um she actually felt it in her neck like a muscular thing mm -hmm. instant relief because your it's your eyes doing all this work yeah. and you don't realize it so the other thing you can do is to go on the website which is n y c o f ny.com what's your percentage of confidence of that website <laughs> what do you mean but did you give it did you give it the right name positive positive okay okay <laughs> because it's the neurovision center of new york we'll post the link in the show notes okay and you can go on there they have a free test that you just take um fill it out and then submit it and they get back to you and let you know the results what you do with that information is then up to you. But Renee Brooks is one girl that took the test. She sent it in. They got back to her with, she lives in Pennsylvania. So the person who does this closest to where she lives is the one who got back to her. Mm -hmm. And they set up an appointment. She went in and that's the next episode I played right the day after, which you listened to. I was really curious the timing of the original interview with, uh, with the doctor. And then with, with Renee. I had the doctor on and it was the following week that Renee took the test and uh, it took, I think, two or three weeks for her to go into the appointment and immediately got diagnosed with this and then was sent home with um, a temporary like just mm -hmm. in one eye with a prism, because that's the solution here is a prismatic glass. Wait a minute. I'm getting something that says, okay. Um, a prismatic glass, a prismatic lens in your glasses. And then it was another like two months that they give, because apparently your eye needs a lot of time to the muscles to, to actually literally relax and go back mm -hmm. to being normal, which normal in that case is going to see double vision. And, and then the, the prismatic lens see does that thing that your brain was doing where it aligns everything up to make a singular image. Sure. Sure. I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense and it seems like it may be one of these things similar to if you hear a, a, a client who struggles with sleep, you know, really encouraging them to get a, a sleep study to at least rule out something like sleep apnea. Because it's one of those things that you know, we know that about 5% of, of people who have ADHD may actually only have sleep apnea and address the sleep apnea and the symptoms of ADHD may go away. Right. And so from what I understood listening to this interview, that yes, there's a lot of overlap, but there may also be some people who only have this this um, vertical heterophoria, right? Um, where you address that and it will resolve a lot of the issues related to ADHD. Yes, and and the big the big thing that she is finding, Dr. Cheryl is finding, is that when they address uh, the kids a lot of them can learn in school so much easier where, you know, you're, you're, you're bending over backwards fighting for these accommodations and not that you might not need them, but you might not need them. If you actually can start to see and it changes everything mm -hmm. for some people, it is that dramatic. And 
like I said, I feel a special, like, uh, passion such an overrated word when I say this, but like, I, I, it's why not? Like you just said, why not take the test and see, right? Because to rule it out simple, if that's exactly. not the case. And that's, and that's what a good, good evaluation should include is let's rule out all the other things that often look like ADHD or, or at least can potentially look mm-hmm. like ADHD. So even if something I say if it has a three to 5% possibility it is worth exploring because if because if something has a a actual solution that's not related to how we manage adhd oh my i mean you, we can change lives you know, right it, exactly it's, it's extraordinary i said eric i said this is probably this is potentially the most important thing i'd ever even talk about honestly and i, I love how you said uh um, on your on your show too this is giving c and adhd a whole new meaning i know i know i was like oh my god this is like really seeing an adhd yeah so exactly. um, seeing an adhd and getting your adhd rewired um it's all about the stories it's about strategies but it's also it's what we are doing to grow our business so i'm gonna take a quick break to uh take a quick moment to thank our sponsors <laughs> It's May 3rd, 2016, and I've got some great news for you. I just added another section to this summer's ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Group. This new section will meet 12.30 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. Central Time. We only have a couple spots left in the morning session, so go to the website to find out more information. While you're asking yourself if this is something that you should do, what I want you to do is is hear what it sounds like on the final day when you get your ADHD rewired. I got a place to laugh at some of my more um, amusing ADD tendencies. I, oh, I've been making a habit of every morning printing out a blank hourly calendar for the day. I'm taking about 15 minutes and planning out my day. I tried to do it the night before. Like, ideally, I'd like to do it the night before. But the problem I was finding was that I was just like, my brain would be too fried at the end of the day. In the morning, like when I first get up, I feel like I can like execute it that much better. I'm an opera singer and I got a gig in Italy for this summer that I'm really excited about because the coaching group helped me stay focused on preparing for the audition. I have meditated and done yoga every single day for the entire 10 weeks. I got my townhouse packed up and cleaned and have a real estate agent now and he's hiring all the people to fix it up and that's a miracle. <laughs> I started drinking cream in my coffee every morning because of Dan. I started saying no. I got my email inbox to zero. I created a place where I write down the priority of my week and then I execute that priority first. I got my study plan in place and going without completely killing my children and husband. I showed up every single time except when I was on my silent retreat. Well, I made a list of things that I'm concentrating on and a list of things I'm eliminating and I'm working on automating and delegating some other things. I adulted. I like got up and brushed my teeth and <laughs> washed my hair. <laughs> Went to class. I adulted. I got my taxes done with uh, three days to spare. Go to coachingrewired.com for details and to schedule your free screening call with me. Registration ends Friday, May 13th. Yes, that's Friday the 13th. So you know what would be really scary? If you don't wait until the last day to register. I know we all have ADHD here, but I'm just saying you could go to coachingrewired.com and register today. You could also get $100 off if you're one of the first three people to register using the promo code Friday the 13th, 100. Go to coachingrewired.com. And we are back with Jenny Friedman from C in ADHD. During the break, we were talking about, there's a, a book that you and I both like very much and uh, um, written by someone who we also both like 
Very much. Um, you were talking about Chasing Heights by Tom Nardone. So yes. And you wanted to kind of talk a little bit about it. We were talking about like the, how we do things with our promotional spots. And then um, I was. Right. Yeah, whenever so, I get the, yeah. Whenever I get the chance to uh, give a shout out to someone who it's a completely unsolicited kind of a thing. I always throw out Chasing Kites by Tom Nardone because number one, he's I'm a raving fan of his. And number two, the book is really, really good. And it's good, especially if you want to try to get on the inside of someone that has ADHD. Um, and like I was telling Eric, I'm sure if you have ADHD, you get a lot out of it. But if you're the parent, especially, I think of someone with ADHD, you really, or a sibling, like in my case, you really see like, from a child's perspective, he really does, I think, do a really bang up job in describing what it was that he was experiencing it, how it was, his point of view. It felt like I was right there with him. It was beautifully written, um, just authentic voice. I can't speak highly enough about it. I read it myself in a day and a half. I, I do think I am the first person to have read it and finished it outside of his publishing people. Really? And yeah, and I own two copies. And I've um, given them, I don't have them to show you right now, but I've given them so people can read. But one is signed and autographed by the Tom Nardone himself. The Tom Nardone himself. Yeah. That's, that's big. I know. That might so, be worth something. I, at, at least the cost of the book. I, <laughs> I got double pleasure. I also got Yvonne to sign it too. Ooh, nice, nice. Yeah. So I think mine has both of their a note from both of them. I, I was like, it's I a collector's recall. edition. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it, you know, it's it absolutely is. It's a awesome book, and you know, I I promote his book and his podcast not just because we're friends, but I mean, honestly, it is a big part of it. You know, because if I didn't like him, I wouldn't be promoting the stuff. Um, but because like. I think it has, it's one of these, you know, I, I love stories and I love stories as a way to help us understand ADHD. Um, and so one of the things that, that we are doing, um, because I've, you know, I know Tom Nardone is now on the ADHD rewire payroll. You know that? Oh, good for him. So uh, he, he's the um, kind of editor. He does all the, the podcast editing, uploads everything. Oh, I didn't know he was editing. Right. Because I do remember... I saw a thing on your on your in your group's forum that you were going to title him that you weren't going to give him the title of producer like, producer and he I was really like what wants are you doing? Name, he really wants the name producer I said give him the producer I said, well come on he deserves it you were like no and then all of a sudden everyone else started pointing out mistakes and I was like oh I didn't even notice any of that stuff <laughs> <laughs> I just think he's awesome. So, you know. he, he is awesome. I'm like sight unseen. I don't care. Produce him. I mean, make a producer. You know, it's that's a raving fan. You see, it totally. I mean, it is. Is it, it, it's so funny too because it's like it's not that I really care about the name so much. I mean, I, I guess I do a little bit. We're talking about it, um, but it's more of like the direction and the vision when I think about producing. Right? Is there another see, word okay. for that? Here's. Well, you can come up with a new name, but here's my take on it. All right, Jenny, take, take me to task. I'm just going to say, in my experience in corporate America, there was one thing that some bosses got and some bosses don't get. And that is titles. While they do immense good for people's self-esteem, they are also free. You get so much in return for so little that to not do that just makes no good business sense to me. Now, that is just my Damn, own Damn, Jenny. Damn. <laughs> That's my own personal take <laughs> because I don't understand when people want to hold on to the title and not give that. It it. it the reward you would get, you would get a Tom Nardone that would step into those shoes and become one kick ass producer. But by holding it like a carrot over his head, he didn't give a shit. He ain't going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Did Tom put you up to this? 
No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm just telling you. I mean, I really did. I worked as a buyer for many years. Uh -huh. I worked for several large corporations, and I've seen this over and over and over again. And I always um, thought it was a mistake because I – when I have seen it in the other, in reverse, like how I feel, mm -hmm. it is I'm only validated. People rise to the um, to the title they they want. And I guess where I, mean, I don't really care. To, I, mean, I can call him the you know the the to, as far as I'm concerned, he's the president of awesome, right? <laughs> you know, and and I'll give him that title any day. So for me, it's it's not just about like the title of like. It's for, it's about clarity of focus, I guess, of like what the the role uh, is. I mean, he does it. I mean, he does more than just editing. He does more than you know uploading content. You know, he's going to be doing web. No, stuff I guess his me. his contribution is more than just that title. Right, right. right. Um, but when I guess I think of producer, it's I mean, Tom and I have different visions about personal development and self growth. Right, and right. so and and I think that's part of where I'm like, you know. So, and one of the reasons I love Tom, which is as a, as a friend, is that we can have different ideas about, you know, how we want to grow and still, like, love each other despite our differences, right? Right. Um, but with ADHD Rewired being, you know, my business, looking, you know, I don't know, may, maybe I'm wrong on this. I, you know, uh, one of the things that I always have the right to be is wrong. Um, but it's just, <laughs> but Look, it's just something, I'm not it, trying to tell you that you're wrong. I'm just telling you that I think you're wrong. Man, Jenny Freeman is putting me in the hot seat of my own show. Ooh. <laughs> I'm not trying. To, I'm not trying to at all. I just, well, you know, it, it all got wrapped up with Tom. But you know, that was that was my. So this hey, is what happens when Tom Nardone sticks his fingers and stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> yes. 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 We can blame Tom on this. No, I just, I do think that it's something it's food for thought of what your goal is mm -hmm. with him in your, in your, uh, in your, you know, company or, mm -hmm. you know, organization, I guess is a better word. And, you know, and this is the year, Jenny, for me that, uh, and I've talked about it on earlier podcasts and I've created videos. And this is the year where I really, become more than just a coach and therapist and podcaster or i really look at at what i do also as the role of business owner right and it's it's in business owners everything outside of you know the craft of of what i do right it's looking at my expense reports looking at my earnings and profitability like being able to project you know can i afford things and you know my my overall strategy for that has been and I don't really want to know. And my wife's taking care of this and I have somebody else doing my, my billing and I, we're paying the bills. We're fine. Right? right. And I'm at this point now where I want to hire people because I've been, you know, hiring um, people to do certain kind of uh, take certain roles. And it's been so helpful. And I really see by getting some things off my plate is really allowing me to, to leverage really what my, my uh, best contribution really is. And so I want to be able to, to hire more people to do that kind of administrative support kind of stuff for me. The stuff that I, I sort of can do, but I, right. I, I hate it. No, it's, I'm with you. Right. Yeah. And so looking <laughs> like at, I said earlier, just because you can do something exactly. does not mean that you should be doing it. <laughs> and so I'm trying to now figure out this year is okay. So I want to hire uh, uh one or two people um, really, th which is a big expense, right? But I got to know, actually know, can I afford that? All right. And so I'm pulling this year. I've been pulling my head out of the sand. I've been working on like really uh, uh, developing a better awareness of, of this. And I think maybe part of it is because I know I want to grow because I know how awesome it has felt to, to be able to hire some people on a limited basis because it's like, oh, my gosh, like I actually spent eight hours on a day doing that. And that person, I just spent an hour explaining what needs to happen and done. Wow, see, and it's, it's magic. <laughs> it is. It is. But the way I also see, uh, here's the wheel and mm -hmm. there's all these cogs in the wheel of your of what you're doing. And 
by enabling the other person to do what they do best. Right. It's like making the world go around. Now you get to do what you do best and they do what they do best. And when there's a lot of micromanagement of other people doing their best, the thing they do best, Mm -hmm. it all falls apart eventually. Mm -hmm. It's like to have a little bit of faith to let the person and this, the guy I learned it from the best was he said, I'm giving them either the freedom to shine or the freedom to hang themselves. It's up to them. Mm. It's not for me to decide right. how they're going to do. Right. And I think that's where I really was like, yeah, yeah, that sounds really good. And I, <laughs> and incorporated it into my ethos, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I would just, um, I would just say, think about it, you know? Giving it thought. I am giving it thought. It is duly noted and recorded. And, <laughs> um, and we'll see what happens. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Stay I mean, tuned. believe me, there's, there's many people. Well, yes, I hope uh, we'll see what happens. But there are many people that does go against their philosophy. So it's not like, um, I'm saying I'm right. I mean, there's definitely Mm -hmm. more than one way to run your business and the way Mm -hmm. to think of things, but that has been my experience and that's where, what I do and how I. Yeah. And and one of the things that I I told Tom too, and sort of this philosophy of when you're, you know, people often say, well, just delegate it. Like it's the simple thing to do. Actually delegation is hard because initially you have to spend more time on that task to make sure that that person understands kind of what you're wanting to do. And then at some point, you know, I think two to three months down the line, hopefully that person is where you need them to be. And then you kind of let them go. And then at that point is where I look at, okay, they're going to, they're going to fly or they're going to, they're going to fail. Right. Right. And I think that that leap of faith is where you just, you, I, I hope you go. Absolutely. So that's, that's where I'm working on with, uh, with Tom. So we're, I don't know, we're probably, uh, five or six weeks into it and um you know also it's also think of it this way do the cost analysis and what do you have to lose because well, you can as we were talking about at the beginning of the show you can change course yeah yeah you can make a really firm decision and you can really change it later yep absolutely absolutely and it was um and, and i tell tom like I, i'm gonna do everything i can to, to help you be successful and working with me because I mean the story goes to I was I was working with uh, my previous editor and there were just things that that kind of were continuing to happen and he I've been working with him for quite some time and I had given him a, a bigger project and um, he didn't deliver and it was, I was very frustrated by it and uh, so I was kind of venting to him about it and he just goes to me Eric please let me be your guy and I was and. When I was venting to you, I was I was fuming at this point because I had this big project that I had it's a due date and it was a it was a oh video boy. project, yeah. and he just goes, "Let me be your guy," I'm like well, that just like brought my anger down like ten notches, and, and I just said, "Let me think about this," and I said, "All right." Well, let me let me also point out how many people want right. to have that. And the, you can't put a price on that. That is so, and true. that want is what you're actually dealing with. Yeah. And so I mean, when Tom you take Spence, that want and you say, I'm going to decide how that want, what happens with that want, you're screwing yourself. <laughs> I'm getting so schooled. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> so Tom over the weekend spent like six hours because I'm starting to do more like videos with the podcast. Um, and so we're kind of trying to work out some templates for like kind of the, the beginning of how that those videos will look. And he spent like six hours creating like a bit strip animation character of me. I mean, that's love, man. I mean, like, oh, oh my gosh. You know what that's I mean? That's what I'm saying. But, but I'm, I'm really urging you to, to, to rewind this and listen to it again and see what you come up with. I have faith that you are going to make the right decision here. And, I think, and not just necessarily I think about that Tom, on the right but path. I think on growing your business, because I have a lot of experience with this. This is not something that I learned just in school. Mm-hmm. I also coach people who are really successful in mm-hmm. business. This is really good business advice. <laughs> this is like, 
people would pay for this advice. This is awesome. I, you know, it's <laughs> <laughs> well, and and I actually I I have I'm working with uh, I, I work with Lori Depart. She's my she's my personal coach, um, and you know she's uh, she's been helping me a lot uh, with this, and it's. Um, uh, cause I, I want to make good business decisions, you know, as an, I love entrepreneurship because it's like it's this great balance of risk, which is exciting with creativity. Because, I mean, think about entrepreneurship. You're really creating something out of nothing. Right. I love it. Yeah. Right? And now I'm like, OK, I'm, I'm past that first stage. Like, I've created it and have established something right now. I'm trying to, to really learn the, the things I need to learn, but how to shift to that next stage where it's, it's using systems and delegation and creating and really streamlining uh, what I do so I can help more people, right? It's right. Because it's just working harder, right, is not the solution. No, working harder is for the birds. For the working smart is, is and, and what I'd like to think of is really allowing other people to work smart too. You're, right. you're here's the wheel and the cogs. And, and if you're, if you're, you know, throwing in to, to that cause, then the person picking it up is going to take it and run and do that in their world. And then, you know what I mean? It's, Mm -hmm. it's all good. Yeah, no, it it is all, it is all good things. Um, So I want to ask you this, Mm -hmm. this might be the impossible question. Okay. So we, you know, we've talked about podcasting. We've talked about kind of relaunch strategies We've talked about vertical heterophoria. We talked about Tom Nardone. Put me in the hot seat uh, as to, you know, titles and names and all that kind of stuff. Then what the hell was this episode about? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. This episode is about. Living your mission. Hmm. It's freaking gold. Yeah. I, I think I might it's say, what I'm doing. I might have it's to add you doing. to the payroll because, it- <laughs> it, because if it takes Tom and I combined an hour and a half to come up with a title for an episode, I should just send it to you and, you know, say, all right, Jenny, you're, you're going to be our title person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a title as people will be like in real estate. Oh no, no. <laughs> in Eric Tiver's podcast names. Um, no, living your mission. That's what I'm doing. That's what you're doing. That's what we can let Tom do. He's main producer. Um, you see, you let everyone do what they're supposed to do. We are all living our mission. And part of living that mission is not only just doing the best, you know, things that you're best at and enjoy, but also the give back. And so I think if you look back on this whole episode, that has been a theme. Then you just saved Tom and I at least an hour and a half of coming up for the title. So thank you for that. <laughs> this hour has been a great investment. Now, I want to make sure that this uh, this time um, is was time well spent and the return on the investment comes back. Jenny, where, oh, people, where can people reach you? Well, everyone could go to cnadhd.com. I've revamped my website so that you can access the podcast there. And every episode gets its own page with its own show notes, which are nothing like anyone else's show notes. And actually, if you want, this is a side note, but I made some visual show notes for Rick Green's episode. You should go check that out. Um, Just scroll down when you get to the website, scroll down and find the episode with Rick Green. And there's a full... um, you can click on it and the full page comes up visual show notes. If you don't want to, if you don't like to read. I love that. I, I, actually, I, I used to do that way back in the day when I didn't want to write them out. I would, I would create a mind map of the show notes. Right. Right. Well, this girl, she's an artist and, and I would love to get to where I could pay her to do it. It's not inexpensive, but they're, they're really cool. And awesome. so, yeah, it's a great idea, but yeah, I will check um, that out and I'll put, yeah. I'll put links to that. On the, the show notes episode. And of, actually, of you know, episode. I will send you a link um, to the, uh, I'll send you a link to the um, iTunes link. Cause if people would go right now, we're still in that little window of time. I got four more weeks, I think of new and noteworthy where you go and leave a, a great review. Um, if it's not a great review, just 
message me privately. <laughs> no, just but all things, um, it does help raise the Put me in the hot seat uh, as to, you know, titles and names and all that kind of stuff. Then what the hell was this episode about? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this episode is about living your mission. It's freaking gold. I, I think I might have to. I might have to yeah. add you to the payroll. It's what I'm doing. It, because it's what it takes Tom and I combine an hour it's and a have to come up with a title <laughs> for an episode. I should just send it to you and, you know, say, all right, Jenny, you're, you're going to be our title person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a titleist. People will be like, in real estate? Oh, no, no. In Eric Tiver's podcast names. Um, no, living your mission. That's what I'm doing. That's what you're doing. That's what we can let Tom do. He's main producer. Um, you see, you let everyone do what they're supposed to do. We are all living our mission. And... Part of living that mission is not only just doing the best, you know, things that you're best at and enjoy, but also the give back. And so I think if you look back on this whole episode, and you just that saved has been a theme. Tom and I at least an hour and a half of coming up for the title. So thank you for that. This hour has been a great investment. <laughs> now, I want to make sure that this uh, this time um, is was time well spent and the return on the investment comes back. Jenny, where can people where can people reach you? Thank you. Well, everyone could go to cnadhd.com. I've revamped my website so that you can access the podcast there. And every episode gets its own page with its own show notes, which are nothing like anyone else's show notes. And actually, if you want, this is a side note, but I made some visual show notes for Rick Green's episode. You should go check that out. Um, just scroll down when you get to the website, scroll down and find the episode with Rick Green. And there's a full, um, you can click on it and the full page comes up. Visual that. show notes I, I used, if you don't, wanna, if you do don't like to read. Way back in the day when I, I didn't know. want to write them out, I would, I would create a mind map of the show notes. Right, right. Well, this girl, she's an artist, and, and I would love to get to where I could pay her to do it. It's not inexpensive, awesome. but they're, they're well, really I'll cool. I'll check that out. And, and so, put, yeah, I'll it's a great idea. I'll put that um, on the, the show notes yeah. episode of, of this episode. And actually, you know, I will send you a link um, to the uh, – I'll send you a link to the um, iTunes link because if people would go – right now, we're still in that little window of time. I got four more weeks, I think, of new and noteworthy – where you go and leave a, a great review. Um, if it's not a great review, just message me <laughs> privately. <laughs> no, just but all things. Um, it does help. Uh, it, it, what what's it do? Right. It raises it, the exposure in the directory, so people can find you. New the, people can find it easier. Findability of the podcast. So you know, and I also love being efficient. So when you're right. on iTunes, go and leave Jenny a review, the C and ADHD podcast, and while you are there. If you've not left ADHD Rewired a review, do that as well. And I've been completely serious with, with all of you guys. Leave Jenny a review. I want Jenny's podcast to be sitting right next to mine on, on iTunes. Look, when we think about the idea that there are 15 million people on average just in the U.S. with ADHD and 85% of those people are walking around, don't even know it. The more people that that can connect with the stories, um, the, the better we are all going to be. So I'm, I'm a huge fan of her podcast. I think that you will absolutely, absolutely. love it. And I, I just encourage you to, to check it out. Subscribe to her podcast. Um, Jenny, I'm so happy to have you back on. And congratulations with, with everything you're doing. Man, five days a week. Oof, that's a lot of listening. <laughs> Thank you. I'm That's why you have to come to on and do a Thursday, show with me. I, think. I know. And it's funny in podcasting. I know. Land, I know. You know I'm it's excited. like you Thursday, I'm excited. but it's like, I always love talking Thursday to you. That when they're listening to it, or is that like, so, you know, 
Exactly. Exactly. So just stay Jenny, tuned. Thank you just... so much for, for talking with us and uh, for helping my listeners get their ADHD rewired. Bye. Bye. And if you're looking for a little bit more inspiration, go read Tom Nardone's most recent blog post. He he did a wonderful, wonderful deed for a young girl who came in to his work who uh, wanted a, a sign painted. Um, you know, I'm not even going to tell the story. This, this girl has autism, and um, it's just an incredible story. Tom, you're a good man. Tom, you can hit record, add the URL where they should go. I think it's tomnardone.net, but I, I'm probably wrong. Yes, thank you, Eric Tivers, for reminding us all there is no substitute for preparation. You are correct. The site is tomnardone.net, and you may go there to read my latest blog post called A Stop Sign for Edie. All right. And if you're still listening, now the usual outro announcements. See you next week or later this week or someone needs to just pull the mic for me. If starting is the hardest part, finishing is a close contender. And here we are at the final stretch. And if you're new to the show, welcome to ADHD Rewired. We are more than just a podcast. We are a community focused on learning, growing, and connection. You could see a full outline of this and all other episodes with all the links and resources mentioned on today's show at ADHDrewired.com. As always, there are a number of ways you can support this podcast. Make it a mission to tell at least one person this week about the podcast. And if you're with them in person, ask them for their phone and subscribe to the podcast for them right there. If you haven't done so already, please go to iTunes or Stitcher and leave an honest rating and review. Yes, it makes a huge difference. Set a reminder so you don't forget. You think I'm kidding. I know some of you have been listening for two years. Yes, this podcast is just about coming up on its two-year anniversary. And you still haven't left a review. Seriously? Come on, send me some five-star love. And thank you. You can also help support this podcast by checking out my sponsors. I use Zoom video conferencing every day, and so can you. Go free or go pro, but please go to erictivers.com slash Zoom so they know that I sent you. And get a free audiobook from Audible at audibletrial.com slash ADHD Rewired. And next time you shop Amazon, use the Amazon search portal at my website. A small percentage of your purchase will go to support this show, and it doesn't cost you any extra. Get a jump start on your summer productivity. Our coaching and accountability group begins May 16th. These groups sell out fast. Go to coachingrewired.com for more information and to schedule your free screening call with me today. Do you know that I give talks and all day workshops? If your school, business, organization, or conference planning committee is looking to hire that person to give an incredible educational, inspirational talk on ADHD, then look no further than erictivers.com. Click on Talks at the top of the page. Don't just be a passive listener. Become an active member of the ADHD Rewired community. We're on Facebook. You can like our page, but submit your request to join our free and growing community. Watch for a message from me on Facebook because I screen everyone before they come into the group. Production support for this podcast comes from the master of mediocrity himself, Tom Nardone. Go to tomnardone.net to check out his blog, podcast, and to get a copy of his awesome personal memoir, Chasing Kites. Hey, Tom, do you have anything to add? Until next time.